Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's talk about homomorphisms of modules. So suppose R is a ring and M and N are two R modules. So they need to be modules over the same ring R. Then a map, a function from M to N is said to be a homomorphism. And sometimes we call it by other names. We sometimes say it's an R linear map. Uh, it's another word for homomorphism or if we want to emphasize the ring R, we sometimes call it an R homomorphism. Okay, so the, there are sort of many different words we use for this. So a homomorphism of R modules is a map uh, satisfying the following two properties. One, that f of uh, x plus y equals f of x plus f of y for all x and y in the set M and property 2 is that f of r acting on x should be r times f of x. So this is the for all x in M and for all ring elements r in r. Okay? So in other words, uh, a module remember has two important operations uh, that of addition and scalar multiplication by the ring r. And homomorphism is a map which preserves these two operations. Okay. Now, uh, so what are, uh, you know, if you sort of look carefully at this definition, you'll notice that this plus here is the addition in the space M. This plus on the right is the addition in the space N. Uh, similarly, if I take this scalar multiplication here, R dot X, this dot is scalar multiplication in N in M and the right hand side is scalar multiplication in n. Okay. Now, uh, one quick observation, if you forgot for the moment that the modules had a scalar multiplication, just think of them as abelian groups under addition, then uh, a homomorphism, if you just look at property one alone here, in particular a homomorphism of R modules is in fact a homomorphism of the underlying abelian groups m and n. Okay. So, observe that this property 1 says exactly that f is a group homomorphism of the group abelian group m plus to the abelian group n plus. Okay. Uh, it's a group homomorphism from m plus to n plus. Okay. Now, uh, property 2 of course says that in addition to being a group homomorphism, it also respects the scalar multiplication. Okay. Now, let us uh, look at examples. So, this is, must be a familiar notion from linear algebra, uh, a map which preserves addition and scalar multiplication. So, this is what we call a linear transformation. right? So, if R is k a field and if M and N are so uh, R modules, therefore they are k vector spaces, then uh, a homomorphism is exactly what we would call a linear transformation. F from M to N is an R homomorphism, uh, means that F is a linear transformation of these two vector spaces. So it's just that familiar notion sort of imported to the context of uh, modules over any ring. So that's the, the first example. Now here's a, a, a quick remark. So of course all these were defined for left modules, uh, but there's, uh, it's not surprising how one defines uh, homomorphisms for right modules. Uh, you just demand that it preserves the scalar multiplication on the right. Okay. So remark if M and N are right R modules, then a homomorphism, a homomorphism 
uh, is a map such that it preserves addition as before and it preserves sort of the right scalar multiplication. So, so recall I, I sort of spoke about this notational convention for right modules. Uh, we often think of it as the, the scalar sort of multiplying on the right. Okay, so f of x dot r is f of x dot r. So, if you have a map satisfying these conditions, then you would call it a homomorphism of right modules. Okay, now uh, let us look at more examples. So, I talked about example 1 which is that of vector spaces and linear transformations. Example 2, so a general class of examples, if n is a sub module of m, if n is a sub module of m, then the inclusion map, so from n to m there is what is called the inclusion map, it is called i which does the following, it takes each element to itself. Okay. So, it is just n is after all a subset of m. So, any element of n is necessarily an element of m as well. So, the inclusion map is obviously a homomorphism. In fact, it is sort of trivially a homomorphism because the uh, you know x plus y of course goes to x plus y, rx goes to rx. So, the properties are, uh, are obvious. So, in particular, uh, if I take n equals m, then the inclusion map becomes what is called the identity map, right, which takes every element to itself. So, this is usually denoted as id or id sub m. This is of course, a homomorphism too. Okay. So, the identity homomorphism or the inclusion homomorphisms. Now, example 3, uh, let us take the same setting as before. If n is a sub module of m, if n is a sub of m, by which I mean sub module, then I consider the quotient. So, recall we talked about the quotient m by n, which is the set of all cosets of n in m. Now, from m to the quotient, I have what is called the projection map, okay, which is what does it do? It takes each element x of m and maps it to its corresponding coset x plus n. Okay. So, this projection map is a homomorphism. Okay. Let us check this quickly. This just follows from the way the addition and the scalar multiplication are defined on the right hand side on the quotient. So, uh, let us check that pi of x plus y. So, what is pi of x plus y? It is uh, x plus y plus n, it is just the coset of uh, the, the element x plus y. But if you recall the definition, this is exactly how addition is defined in the quotient module. Okay. Now, pi of rx similarly is just the it is the, the coset of rx, but again by definition that is exactly how scalar multiplication was defined on the quotient module. Okay. So, these two uh, equations here uh, establish that this map pi is in fact a r module homomorphism. So, we have these natural uh, classes of examples, the inclusion and the projection maps. Now, let us look for other uh, example. So, example 4, if we have a ring, if we take our ring r to be the, the ring of integers, then recall that uh, if I have two r modules, so z modules uh, are the same as abelian groups. Okay, This is the same as saying that m and n are really abelian groups. Okay. And what is a homomorphism now from m to n? Okay. So, homomorphism is supposed to satisfy two properties f of x plus y is f x plus f y. In other words, it is a group homomorphism and it should satisfy this compatibility with respect to all x in m, compatibility with respect to scalar multiplication by elements of z, 
but observe that this second property is superfluous we don't really need this one if the function satisfies the first property that fx plus f of x plus y is fx plus fy then the second property is automatically true okay this implies the second one automatically for z modules and why is that because recall that f of so if r is an integer so let's say for the moment let's suppose r is a positive integer then recall that this scalar multiplication was just repeated addition so you just had to add x with itself r times right this is how we defined it and if the first property is true it means f of uh, you know x plus x plus x is the same as f of x plus f of x plus f of x those many times this is just by using the first property alone that it is a group group homomorphism this implies this but that's exactly the definition of how uh, the element f of x is scalar multiplied by r okay so of course i will just leave it for you to check that the same sort of thing holds if r is negative or zero so what this really says is uh, recall we said if you a z module is essentially the data of just the abelian group okay the scalar multiplication is defined in terms of the addition and for homomorphisms a similar thing holds a homomorphism of z modules is just a homomorphism of the underlying abelian groups the compatibility with respect to scalar multiplication just follows naturally as a corollary okay so that's the uh, fourth example let's do our uh, other standard example which is the ring kx of polynomials or in one variable x so where k is a field and here again we know what so let's say m is an r module and recall that modules over the polynomial ring kx are the same as well what is it it's like having a vector space v together with a linear operator on it okay so where v is a uh, some vector space over the field k so it's a k vector space where v is the k vector space and t is from v to v is a linear operator okay and recall again from all our previous lectures that uh, the element x the polynomial x acts as the linear operator t okay now similarly let's take n that's also given to be an r module so let's assume that n corresponds to the pair w comma s where w again is a k vector space and s is a linear operator on w okay so now what we are going to do is to try and figure out uh, what it means for a map f from m to n to be a homomorphism so suppose i give you a homomorphism of r modules of kx module so suppose f from m to n is a homomorphism of kx modules Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so let us check uh, what it means. Now, uh, let's go to the next page. So observe that it just means that uh, I have uh, uh, the additivity property. So this means two things: number one, f of v one plus v two. For all v one and v two in V. So notice that uh, you know when I say m and n are given by v and w, so v and w recall are the underlying spaces. So I should probably just replace m and n by the underlying vector spaces v and w. Okay. So I uh, the the set is v and w, and I have a map between them which satisfies these two axioms. Number one, f of v one plus v two is f v one plus f v two. so this is the additivity second property is f of rv is rfv okay so let's try and analyze what the the second property means so we'll try and understand this so let's uh, do the following uh, we'll start out by so first let's take so case a 
let me take r to be an element of the field k itself okay r in general it can be any polynomial it's an element so remember this is k of x so i should put in all polynomials in x there but for a start i will just take the constant polynomials okay so take r to be a constant polynomial so in this case the i know that this is true that f of r v so which implies i conclude from property 2 so property 2 in particular implies that f of r v is r f v for all uh, constant polynomials okay now what does this mean this says that if i multiply v by a scalar from the field k that scalar can be pulled out okay now uh, let's analyze this property so i have this guy together with the additivity with the first property so now put these two together and let's stare hard at it what does it tell us about f it says that f is a linear transformation of the vector spaces v and w Okay, so, this the, the two properties I have marked in green are exactly uh, the definition of f from v to w is a linear transformation okay, of these vector spaces. It is a linear transformation of the k vector spaces. v and w okay, or v to w really. Okay, so that is only part of the data, we have not used the full force of the hypothesis. We have concluded that at the very least f is a linear transformation from v to w. Now let us do uh, still more, let us also take the polynomial x here. So far we have taken r to only be the constant polynomial. So case b, let me take for r, I will take the polynomial x power 1 or x. This is of course a valid choice of scalar, it is an element of the ring. So now I will plug this in and see what I get. So remember f of rv is the same as rfv for all v in v. So this again is for all v in v. Now what does this imply? Since r is x, this means that f of x acting on v should be x acting on fv. And recall that the action of x is exactly given by the action of the polynomial by the operator t. So, this is the same as s acting on f v. Okay. So, this last equation uh, comes from realizing that the actions, so this, this data here exactly says that the polynomial x acts as t and the polynomial x acts as s on v and w respectively. Okay. So now let us uh, unravel this a little bit more. So we have concluded the following that uh, I have this operator f, it is a linear operator from, so f is a linear, sorry, linear transformation and second property I have concluded is that f composition t is the same as s composition f, okay. So that is what this, this last equation says, f of t v is the same as so this equation here is just saying that f composition t is the same as s composition f. Now let us try to figure out where these uh, compositions really live. So remember t is an operator from v to v and uh, s is an operator from w to w. So what does this say? It says that f composition t is the same as s composition f. Okay. So let me think of it as follows that let me draw t in the, in the opposite direction, it is a map from v to v. So let me think of it as going like this. So now observe what am I saying, I am saying that whether I, uh, you know, so if I look at, so maybe I should put the f here, ah, okay, good. So let me now draw it in the same direction so that this diagram is slightly more symmetrical. So I will draw the diagram in this way. So let me just put one more additional f on the bottom. So what I have drawn is a diagram of these vector spaces v and w, a little square of uh, maps. Now let us observe what this, this uh, equality says about this diagram. So it says that if I look at f composition t means I first come along t and then go along f. So it is this way, I come from v and go down to w. 
the other side s composition f is the other path i first do f and then i do s okay so what this identity is telling me is that whether i go along this this l here or this inverted l i get the same answer okay so this particular uh, diagrammatic way of understanding such uh, compositions so we usually say that this diagram commutes so we draw this diagram and when we say this diagram commutes it just means that whether you go along one path or the other path the answer is the same okay and we usually put this little arrow here to say the diagram commutes okay so this is really what a homomorphism is between two uh, kx modules we have concluded that it must be a linear transformation which makes this diagram commute which is such that f composition t is the same as s composition f okay and uh, of course you can say that we still haven't used the full force of the hypothesis we only plugged in r to be a constant and we took r equals x power 1 what about other polynomials what about r equals x square x cube what about 1 plus x plus x square and so on now it turns out uh, all of those don't really add any more information to this to this mix okay so if a function f satisfies these two properties that it's a linear transformation makes the diagram commute then it automatically ensures that it is a uh, r linear map or a, or a homomorphism okay meaning all the other r's can also be pulled out so let let me just state that as my final conclusion okay so f from v to w is a kx linear map so i'm now using the alternate terminology for uh, homomorphism so i'll keep going switching back and forth between these various terminologies f from v to w is a kx linear map if and only if f satisfies two properties number one f from v to w is k linear in other words it's a linear transformation of i uh, e is a linear transformation of these vector spaces and property 2 it makes the diagram commute the diagram commutes what diagram the one that i just drew okay v to w v to w f t s this diagram commutes okay so i claim that this is if and only if so i have shown one direction now uh, i will leave it as an exercise for you to show that the reverse is also true just having these two properties is enough to ensure that uh, this map will actually be kx linear okay and to do that you really have to show if x you know you can sort of pull the x out then you can also pull out x square x cubed x power 4 and so on okay it's the same sort of theme we have seen before okay Thank you.